In this video, we will tackle the biology of pituitary adenoma. First, let's memorize what is a pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is the master gland of the body. It's found right behind the nose and its diameter is one centimeter. It's connected with the hypothalamus by a structure called a stoke. The hypothalamus sends a signal through this stoke and these uh, signals are translated especially in the anterior pituitary gland as hormones so what about the second term what does adenoma stand for adenoma oma stands for a tumor adenoma stands for a benign tumor and not any benign tumor a benign tumor in a glandular tissue and specifically in an epithelial cells that commonly has a secretory function either through the blood and will be endocrine or through a duct and will be exocrine pituitary adenoma is diagnosed with mri so when a patient gets an mri scan its adenoma will be classified based on size so if the size of the tumor is less than one centimeter it will be called a micro adenoma and if it is bigger than one centimeter it will be called macro adenoma and for your reference the pituitary gland itself is one centimeter in diameter Pituitary gland is called the master gland because it can secrete six different hormones that will correspond to five different types of adenoma and one type of non-secreting adenoma that we will tackle now in details just after you hit the like button so others can find the video. Let's start with lactotrophs. Lactotrophs are the cell responsible for secreting prolactin. Pro stands for before and lactin stands for lactation. And this is the hormone responsible for inducing lactation in women. If the DNA of this cell got mutated and turned into a cancer cell, it will go uncontrolled cell division. This will cause an increase in number of cells, subsequently an increase in the secreted hormone prolactin. And this will cause a breast enlargement in both men and women galactoria mostly in women infertility mostly in men then you will ask yourself how this type of adenoma can be treated we have the first line dopamine agonist second line is surgery if needed if there is no response from the dopamine agonist and thirdly radiotherapy physiologically the hypothalamus secretes dopamine to suppress the production of prolactin same concept applies to the dopamine agonist as a treatment it's a chemical compound that was designed to bind firmly with a dopamine type 2 receptor that sends signal to the cell that can suppress the transcription of prl gene uh, in addition multiple signals can induce apoptosis of the cell Although the exact mechanism of apoptosis is still debatable, let's move to the second type of secreting pituitary adenoma, which is initiated in somatotrophs. Somato or soma stands for body. This type secretes growth hormone that controls the body size or body height. If the number of this cell increased, this will cause an increase in growth hormone secretion and the symptoms for this will be increase in height which is gigantism or acromegaly in adults. The management for this type of adenoma is surgery and radiotherapy. Somatostatin from its name it will induce a static effect on the body. It functions by binding to a certain receptor inhibiting the secretion of growth hormone. Are you tired? Not yet? Wow that's great. If you wanted to know more in Cancer Basics, I will upload a course soon this year, so hit the bell icon to be notified. Let's move to the third type of trophic hormones that's secreted by corticotrophs. Cortico stands for cortex, the adrenal cortex, and trophs stands for stimulating. So this hormone will stimulate the adrenal cortex. This hormone is called ACTH, and in case of adenoma, this hormone will be secreted in excess, leading to the overstimulation of the adrenal cortex leading to increased cortisol and if you ask yourself what was the function of cortisol cortisol is responsible for the stress and the stress can cause an increase in blood pressure and increase the blood glucose that will cause a syndrome called Cushing syndrome the management of this type of adenoma is surgery adjuvant to the surgery is radiotherapy and somatostatin is usually used as neoadjuvant and sometimes it can be combined with dopamine agonist to have a biochemical control on the ACTH levels let's dig deeper to the mechanism of somatostatin in the corticotrophs it binds here with a receptor called SSTR5 instead of 2 anyway it will cause a suppression of secretion in addition to a suppression of proliferation it has an anti-tumor effect the fourth type of cells found in the anterior pituitary gland are the thyrotrophs 
and they secrete TSH that stands for thyroid stimulating hormone that means that they will secrete a hormone that will stimulate the thyroid to secrete T3 and T4 and T3 and T4 are responsible for weight loss increase in metabolism in general and they will cause sleep difficulty for symptoms similar to hyperthyroidism the management of this type of adenoma the first line is surgery second is radiotherapy and somatostatin are effective with this type of adenoma the fifth type of adenoma we have is gonadotroph that secrete both FSH and LH these hormones stimulate the gonads and in case increase in cell number and increase in production of these hormones will lead to the overstimulation of prostate gland that will cause an increase in testosterone levels same case for ovaries will cause an increase in estrogen the symptoms that will be seen on the patient that has an adenoma uh, early puberty and irregular mens cycles the management of this type of secreting adenoma is surgery and radiotherapy the last type of pituitary adenoma is the non-functioning or non-secreting pituitary adenoma that is originated from gonadotrophs they can have negative impact on the body by their mass effect as for example they can press on the optic nerves as optic nerves pass nearby the pituitary gland this is in the pituitary gland this is optic nerves and the optic chiasm however you have to take care that the patient will most probably not notice that he is losing his peripheral vision the second symptom due to the mass effect is the blockage of the dopamine the dopamine cannot reach the interior pituitary it cannot normally suppress the prolactin this will cause an increase in prolactin a mild increase not to the degree of the prolactinoma we have seen earlier the third mass effect is hemorrhage of the tumor of the pituitary gland or technically called apoplexy and both apoplexy and loss of peripheral vision are considered emergencies that need surgery finally most of the non-functioning pituitary adenoma are asymptomatic in this case no need for surgical intervention and only regular checkup or follow-up is needed a study has shown that 20 percent of the population develop a type of asymptomatic adenoma during their lives let's end up with two questions the first question is what is adenocarcinoma uh, adenocarcinoma is the malignant form of adenoma it has the ability to metastasize it's malignant and it constitutes around 0.1 percent of all pituitary tumors which means that is very rare the second question is what is an aggressive pituitary adenoma aggressive pituitary adenoma has the ability to invade nearby tissue invasion resistance to conventional therapy and it constitutes around 0.5 percent of all pituitary tumors